America, fuck yeah, coming again to save the motherfucking day, America, fuck yeah, so lick my dick and suck on my balls, oh, that is the new, that should be the new national anthem, let's be honest, let's be serious here, let's just be real about who we are, right, Team America should be the new national anthem, can I get a second from the, from the panel, anybody gonna stop me? I mean, a lot of people have said that, so yeah. Okay, all right, Greg. It's true. A lot of people have said it. It's true. It's I'd true. like to take this moment to welcome all our young listeners. Thank you for uh, for joining us. For, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Everybody's welcome. We are all inclusive as long as, you know, you're willing to sing the Team America theme song as our new national anthem, right? That's that, that I think. In the you've end. seen that movie. Yeah. So we're all clear. That is the Birdman telling you kids to go ahead and sing that in your classroom. Um, that is the Birdman, not Three Clubs. <laughs> not or three Star clubs. Child's landing on that, but I feel like he's a little bit complicit on this. Um, so yeah, he did second my motion. I'm yeah, just, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, go ahead and watch it, kids. Go all right, we're talking to the person that had three different lunches at three different schools in uh, high school. So. I don't know if you really want to follow Star Child either. No, good, However, good, I would yeah. argue both of them are doing better than me, and I paid way more attention in school. So I'm saying, you know, that, kids sing that fucking song. Sing it song. That's it. And it. Let's be honest. Star Child got fed. Like that's when you talk about three different lunches at three different schools. It sometimes was in the same day that happened. You know, I'm sure. Right. I'm sure if you have possible. A- the whole yeah, lunch schedule uh, all worked out there, right? And yeah, you got the you know three different art classes, which is why you're so good at uh, that. Your at your medium and yeah. uh, and and working through in your you not know. talent. No, uh, all right, you know. I mean, I I, I like that uh, you've got a rosier picture of it than I do, so that was fantastic. Well, doesn't the past always do that? I yeah, mean, I know, right? They, you know, they they say hindsight is twenty twenty, but it's also got a pair of rose colored glasses, and it says objects and mirror are closer than they appear. So <laughs> it's a good yeah. thing I got my Scott Summers ready to go, baby, because I'm about oh. to Cyclops blast this bitch all over. Oh snap! Three of clubs, like it's ninety seven in. in here. Oh damn, son! Damn, oh, we can't. We're not talking about that, are we? No, not today. No, calm but- down. <laughs> All right. But as always, <laughs> as always, these subjects, these subjects brew up naturally. It's like a natural brewing process with wild yeast and what have you. Yeah. Nothing wild going yeast. On. Wild yeast. Nothing going on in America wild today. Yeast. Nothing, nothing, nothing to talk about. There was, in fact, not a former president of the United States convicted on 37 criminal counts today. That didn't happen. No, everything is just hunky dory. <laughs> It is just <laughs> going along. Everything is just moving along smooth here in Mayberry. And as a matter of fact, I think my wife has a pie on the windowsill. Uh, mm. And uh, Austin Austin Butler is pleased. Uh, Butker or whatever his name is, is uh, pleased. She's, uh, you know, uh, submitting and uh, in her place. And uh, yeah, God's in his heaven. Everything is uh, everything is good. The steam gentlemen are back. Everything Ta-da. is ready to go. We are back here in the steam tunnels. You've heard from my co-host, but let me introduce them formally. Three of clubs coming in. He is just full of piss and vinegar today, man. He is ready to go. He is he is laced up. He has got the wraps on. He is ready to go. Three of clubs, what's going on? Well, uh, yeah, I am full of piss. That's why I pee all the time. What do you do? How do you do? I remembered how to say it to you. And it's good uh-huh. to see everyone. Good to talk. And um, I got to tell you, with uh, Mr. Birdman's lead in, it makes me feel weird that my background is of a Mario-esque uh, landscape. It's- Fortunately for everyone involved, that Mario-esque. can see this, all, yeah, all yeah. two of us. Um, or yeah, all the people can see this. Fortunately, there are no Mario mushrooms behind me. So, uh, yeah, do with that what you will, if you're listening to this in a future date, but we are talking on May 30th. So whatever that means to you, if you look at the history of May 30th, 2024, just understand there are no Mario mushrooms behind me. No shrooms. Uh, That's it. Didn't say no shrooms. I said no Mario mushrooms. All right, gotta go, gotta go. Star mode. Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 why do, why are you holding? Are you holding? Are you holding Caulfield? Yeah. You fucking, you fucking holding back on me? Don't yeah. do that. You Don't holding Caulfield? What's up? 
That's it, man. Come on. Uh, <laughs> pull, pull down your back pocket. Share. You know I share. I am good to my friends, especially to those friends who've been good to me, like you too. And speaking of friends who've been good to me, I'm also joined by the one, the only star child, Mr. Gregory Descents. What's going on? Got our Celtics in the in the finals, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, I'm happy Dude. about it. I am okay. ready for this. I still wish we could have had the Knicks instead, but whatever. You know, I'll beat I'll beat the Pacers. That's fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, I felt good about it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Do you think uh do you think number zero gets raised to the rafters or what's the deal? Uh we'll see. Okay. All we'll right. see. I can't say now, you know, especially you know, now they're talking about expanding the NBA. Now they're talking about, you know, exactly. Yeah. yeah so we'll we'll yeah. see where he ends up and where he uh, ends up having his best years. Okay. All right. But yeah. okay. I think we just had some breaking news right here. There you go. I yeah, I didn't know about the expansion. I, I won't lie. Uh yeah, some like Seattle wants a team again. And again. Uh, oh, yeah, it's been since think, Supersonics. And I think yeah. Vegas wants a team. Oh god. Oh okay. yeah. Seattle, yeah. take better care of your team that you had. Come on now. But you're doing pretty they're doing well with the Mariners these days and the Kraken, so maybe they deserve one back. And Vegas don't forget the uh, timber. Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Vegas, I'm still you coach of... soccer, and that's your response. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That is entirely my response. And you should see my record too. My my own son was like, How come we've lost so many games? I'm like, Well, it's actually because you're that's only just because you're keeping track, son. That's, that's all. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> Quite honestly, like he is honest, and I'm. I, this isn't even a humble brag, but he's honestly my best goalie. But I've tried not to keep him in 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 for both halves, and unfortunately, those like sometimes one of those halves is not gone our way. So that happens. All right, what can you do? You got to mm. make sure it's fun for everyone. But we are here. We are back, and we are talking America. And the things that make America, America. And actually, I want to I want to defer. I want to hand the gavel over a little bit to my man, Three of Clubs. So make sure I don't fuck this up because usually I fuck this stuff up. So, so we're admitting doing that, that we don't right? have any power. Instead of that, I am going to make sure that the concept is introduced properly to what brings us here together today to talk uh, pop culture and social commentary. Social Just commentary. at the top, if you haven't already, make sure to rate and review us on iTunes. Make sure to follow us on the go. socials. We are uh, the Steam Gentleman Podcast on Facebook and Do You Even Steam Bro on Instagram uh, and Steam G's on Twitter, I think, or X. 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 By the way, did you hear another guy's gonna like try and take people down to the Titanic again? Anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, since we're talking about billionaires with great ideas, uh, right? We got X, we got all, we got all the things. But let me hand it over. Let me hand the mic over just briefly to my man, Three of Clubs. Tell us about the concept. This is the one that had you fired up. This is this is your dream. You're up. You're up to it. Just tell us what's going on. Wow, there's there's so much that you left me with, and once again, you've made me distracted with what I wanted to talk about to just sort of talk about the shit you just said, which leaves me all over the place. I just said, I just said, I don't want to fuck it up, and I want to let you talk about it. Go for it. All right, so we're approaching um, multiple Independence Days in this country. We have two coming up right in front of us. We just passed Memorial Day. Um, so I wanted to go a little Americana for the next uh, few subjects or topics, if if my panel will allow me. And uh, what made me want to go in this direction is, look, there's some heavy shit obviously going on, both in this country and in the world. However, I think levity is a needed uh, element in all aspects of life, whether you look at it from the Greek understanding of what tragedy and drama really is, that comedy is, in fact, the middle of it, um, or however you want to look at it. I don't care. That is what I'm going to give you the sort of parameters around what we're talking about. This is supposed to be a light topic, and God damn it, I found one for you. Um, and let's start with the idea that a lot of people, even from this country, but definitely not from this country, have a hard time understanding why we we're always uh, saying things like America, home of the brave. Like, why are you so brave? What makes America so brave? I'm going to tell you why. 
or at least one of the reasons. It's our fucking bravado. It isn't just our bravado in the sense of we can do things. It's our bravado in the sense of we can do things and we're not even going to think about any other reason why this could go wrong. Why? Because no. we're Americans. Like we are at the height of what is good, bad, or indifferent that we go into so many different things that end up being such monumental fuck ups. You can only describe the participants as, I would argue, you brave? Uh, we are home of the brave because we do phenomenally weird fucking things. Now, look, I can, uh, I will argue when I think a lot of people who have been somewhere outside their own country and just interacted in someone else's country, whether you listen to uh, things like sports fans or blah, blah, blah. You know, every country has a unique way of doing something fucked up and weird. Every country has a unique way of doing something. I mean, we were just talking about soccer and, and you know, uh, sideways, so to speak. And, like, there are plenty of moments, stories, videos, blah, 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 of stadiums going absolutely haywire for the smallest things. So every country has the capacity to do something uniquely weird and fuck up when they fuck up. However, hey, I know I'm biased because I'm from this country. My family has been in this country for 400 plus years. Our blood is in this more than any other family I can think of. I'm going to go ahead and say I'm biased and say that when America does what I'm about to talk about, when we hit this level of fucking up, honestly, there is there's just no other taste like it. It is... It is so bad dropping from your forearm, what the fuck type of what was anyone involved thinking type of fucking up. I would posit to everyone the most American thing that had ever Americaned. Yes, mm. there's an apostrophe D at the end of that because, God damn it, when we do things and it's American style, it, it, no one's touching us. No one's coming close. Mm. So you're probably already thinking two minutes in. Sean, what the fuck are you talking about? Can you please get to it, three clubs? And here we go. Boom. So we start. I'm going to tell uh, you a little ditty. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to share a little story with you, all right? But I need to give you a little lead in. I need to give you a little history. I need to chop up my mise en place to create this little dish for you, right? So let me get your mm-hmm. first ingredients. We had nine reception recessions, big ones, before the moment I'm talking about. Nine. Nine people. This country, in this, in the, if you put our country's age up against other countries, we're barely teenagers, and we've already had nine fucking recessions up until this point that I'm talking about, and it ain't recent. I'm gonna tell you that right now. No, it's not recent. This shit happened a while ago. So nine recessions, giant, and that includes the Great Depression up until this moment. Okay, nine recessions. So that is about. Say we're talking about 40 something years from the Great Depression, and it is the ninth recession in this moment. Also, what I'm uh, pointing out is this is 54 years after the prohibition. Now, why is that important? Two things. One, only America thought it was a good idea to fucking ban alcohol while everyone was still drinking alcohol. Literally, everyone was still drinking alcohol while we're banning it. They were drinking alcohol in the Congress halls when they're writing up fucking laws to ban it. There's never any stop of us drinking alcohol, yet we somehow figured out, we're just going to run with it for four and a half, five years, see what the fuck happens. I don't know. What what could happen (laughs) after a depression? (laughs) Nothing bad, right? Nothing weird. Nothing what could possibly crazy. go nothing wrong? Weird. No, nothing, yeah, nothing weird. like almost creating a second civil war based off of fucking alcohol consumption. None of that. Not like creating the advent of where we are in modern criminal families. No, none of that. None of that. Matter of fact, you can argue one of our presidents came from prohibition. But anyway, doesn't matter. Mm. No one thought about that, right? Because 54 years after prohibition, ninth recession. In an area that is super impoverished. So, yes, the whole country is going through a recession at this time. But this area is so fucking impoverished that at this point they had 600 factories in the surrounding area shut down by the time I'm talking about. The river that was going through the city of the place that I'm talking about was not only on fire, had caught fire multiple fucking times. Do you know what kind of work you have to do to set 
body of water on fire. And that ain't just mean still body of water. I mean, moving a river, people. If you think that's fucking easy, go ahead and step into a river. Just go ahead. See what happens. Now try to set that shit on fire. And then try to do it again. And then try to keep doing it. And oh, by the way, try to keep it on fire for like weeks at a time. This the city figured it out, and they did it hmm. with a plum. Like they're just like, yeah, this is, <laughs> we, we got this, no problem. Like honestly, by the time you get to our river, we don't even have a fuck. So we have all these elements leading into. Oh wait, let me back up one more thing. The professional baseball team of the city was in the middle of another disastrous shit ass season. So. You're going to take a city that has a shitty baseball team, hadn't won shit in a while, and the entire area was impoverished because there's no jobs to be found. The only thing people could do is basically commit crimes or fucking get fucked up or both or whatever. Like, massive, massive poverty. Something that our country has almost never seen in a metropolitan area, area like this area that I'm about to talk about. So all this leads into a nice, warm, hot, steamy, humid summer day, 1974, June 4th, 1974. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the brilliant idea that the Cleveland, I'm not going to say what their name was before, but let's just go ahead and say we're the Guardians, the Cleveland baseball team. uh, Sorry, are the Guardians now. The Cleveland baseball team, the organizers say, hey, you know what? We are having a hard time getting people in the stands. We're only getting like a thousand people, a couple of thousand in this situation every single night. We are losing money left and right. How are we going to get people in the stands? Someone, I hope someone, I hope someone fucking high as hell, but probably sober as shit, probably drunk, frankly, was like, you know what? Why don't we do this? We got a lot of beer. Why don't we just go ahead and offer 10 cent beers? And someone's like, yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't we actually take it another step and say, 10 cent beer night. Not like hey. any, not half inning. We're just gonna give them the whole goddamn night. 10 cent beer. Now you might be thinking, all right, Rashawn, that, that's bad, but obviously there's rules in place. <laughs> no, because we're talking about the United States and we don't fucking believe in rules until we actually have to have rules. And part of the reason why we have rules the way we do now, like you can't buy any alcohol after seventh inning, is because of what I'm about to talk about. So 1974, June 4th. 10 cent beer night. What could go wrong? Oh, fuck yeah. I hope you got imagination. Because what I'm about to tell you is going to conclude in, and I can't wait to tell you these stats because honestly, it, it's just mind blowing. What I'm about to tell you, conclusion, let's start with the easy part 60,000 beers recorded sold. That sounds like a big number, but I'm about to tell you right now, that's not even actually the full number because some of the events that happened, they weren't tracking sales. Um, also, 19. 19- Full streakers. Now, you may wonder, why did you just say full streakers for shine? Oh, that's that's actually going to come into play. Because, you know, some people had other agendas when they're doing it. But for the most part, 19 full. What I mean full, completely nude streakers. By the way, most of them weren't even caught. Um, also, can I, hold on, can I ask one question? And I, and I understand if you don't have the stats on you. Mike. Let's see how many went Winnie the Pooh style. I want to know how many were, <laughs> were Donald ducking, you know, because you have the full streak. Sure. And uh, that's great. Respect. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I, I, I'm just curious if anywhere on the Google is the, 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 the you know, the animated duck style. So anyway, continue. Uh, yeah, no, I don't think at this point when people, when we got to 19 streakers, I don't think anyone had any sort uh. of ability <laughs> to be hiding anything. Matter of fact, how it started off showed that humility was not going to be part of the situation. But again, we're talking 10 cent beer night. Um, also, seven ER visits, nine arrests, and um, they have yet to find the stolen bases. And I don't mean like some oh, wow. base. No, I mean like when shit kicked off, bases were stolen. By the way, this was in the middle of the game. This wasn't even when the game ended because they had to stop it. This is in the Ricky, middle of the game where bases Ricky got Henderson was not even playing yet. Come on. <laughs> so, here we go. They announced... Tencent Beer Night. Now, you're going to have to put a couple of more minutes on here because I had to do the whole intro, blah, blah, blah. Nah, I, this is getting the full fucking story. So they announced Tencent Beer Night, thinking a couple of people are going to show up. A couple of more. Again, they're only getting a couple of thousand. What, what's really going to happen? So they had 50 police and security guard on hand to be ready for the crowd. Crowd that is used to seeing about, let's say, 2,500 to about 5,000 people. How many people showed up? You want to guess? You want to guess? Anyone want to guess? 
fuck you. It doesn't matter. 25,000 people showed up. 25,000 people showed up. That's what the count was. God only knows what it really was. It was probably close to 30,000. But anyway, mm. obviously, 50 police officers and security, you nailed it, right? You're ready to go. Cool. So anyway, things are going. 10 cent beer night. There's no fucking rules. Uh, actually, no, I lied. There were rules. You can only get six beers at a time. Not a night. The fuck? Not a person. Six beers a time. So 60 cents for an impoverished area that was already going through some bullshit. River's on fire still. And you're going to tell them that all they got to do is have six beers a person at a time. So what would people do? They drank 60 cents worth of beers, got back in line because there was no stopping them, and kept going to the point where they could not keep up the consumption that the crowd was going after. And they literally stopped the concessions, backed in the beer trucks to the outfield wall because they had a type of stadium where the outfield wall was still part of this, uh, the fan experience. Literally gotcha. backed in the beer trucks so people can go to that. Don't worry because that fucking goes to shit real fast anyway because, again, six beers a person. Anyway, so that's how they start, right? Cool. Things are going crazy. Um, by the way, again, it's the 70s, so no one's really caring about security. Let me just run you through some of the highlights that happens. Um, oh, I also forgot to tell you now, this is going to go crazy, man. You go ahead and cut this into multiple things because this, this has to be told. So earlier before this game starts, these two teams, it's Cleveland and Texas Rangers, had already had a fucking fight. They had already had a brawl. They are already pissed off at each other. Things were not cool. Basically, what happened was uh, someone slid into second too hard from Cleveland. Texas wasn't cool. They started throwing balls at people's head. Literally, a fight gets, happens. Ironically, in this game that happens before the beer night, a bear is thrown. Yeah. To the field. I know. Uh, Who saw that fuck? Coming? The hell? I know. Who saw that coming? So anyway, we go ahead, we get back to this game, right? Second inning happens, everyone thinks we're good. A woman jumps out of the stands, ju uh, jumps in front of the Cleveland, uh, uh, whatchamacallit, um, dugout, flashes him, cool, and then gets escorted <laughs> out after she tries to kiss the head on fire. Cool. After cool. she tried to kiss the head on fire. So she had made it to flash the dugout and then get to the head on fire before security even got there. That's how we're fucking starting. Immediately after that, we had our first streaker who went onto the second base, struck, did struck, I was struck like it's past it, <laughs> did his streaking, and then ran away. He is yet to actually be identified or caught. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. So then I talked about how they line up the beer trucks because we're just running out of fucking beer. By the way, who's running the beer trucks in this little table in front of the beer trucks? Two scantily clad teenage girls. I'm not exaggerating. Teenage, and I don't mean like teenage in the legal sense. No, I mean teenage like their asses still aren't fucking legal enough to drink. They were scantily clad because who else is going to bring the guys to the beer truck other than 10 cents of beer? Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> finally, they got that. fed up. Finally, they got fed up and they left because they were getting fucking harassed and probably essayed left and right by a bunch of drunk fucking dudes and shit. And they leave. So now we have beer trucks that are unattended. No one cares. They take the fucking cash table, they throw it over the, the 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 wall, and now they're just going right to the beer, and no one's counting, no one's checking, no one's paying for shit. It's literally a free for all to the beer. You think this is where things get crazy, but I'm actually just fucking warmed up. I'm sorry, but this has to be told. I'm too excited. So now we are now we are not even at the fifth fucking inning yet. We're not even at the fifth inning yet. That's all happened before fucking five innings, y'all. God damn it. Mm -hmm. So now, now we're at the fifth inning. The manager of the Rangers, which if you know baseball, the man I'm about to say, you're going to say, oh, God damn, this is about to get crazy. If you don't know the story and you're, I'm about to tell you the manager, but you know baseball, you know shit's about to get real. The manager for the Rangers goes out to talk to his pitcher because, you know, kind of it was a weird game going on. The manager is Billy fucking Martin. If you do not know who Billy Martin is, kids, go ahead and look him up and understand He's not the one to be in this situation. There's a lot of other managers you don't want in this situation. Billy Martin might be at the top of that list because he is known to not give a fuck. He's still the only person to tell George Steinbrenner to go fuck off multiple times. He has quit multiple times. He's the only Yankee to do that and get hired back. This is Billy Martin. So he hmm. goes, and now, by the way, because it's the 1970s, there's no goddamn rules whatsoever for security. He goes to talk to his uh, pitcher. The fans get upset. 
they start booing and throwing beer onto the field <laughs> and firecrackers and fireworks. I did not exaggerate that, people. Fireworks and firecrackers were thrown onto the field. Billy Martin, still being Billy Martin on the way back to the dugout, blows kisses at the fans. You would think that would be like <laughs> something, right? No. What do they do? They fucking go ham on the dugout from the Rangers and just start pelting them with fucking more fireworks. They're throwing fireworks into the dugout. Game's still going. Gentlemen, I am not kidding you. The game is still fucking going. So now, close kisses. I have to go through my notes because this is insane. You guys have to get the whole story, right? So now the PA steps in. PA is like, by the way, guys, uh, fans, I know things are getting kind of out of control. Please do not throw stuff onto the field. Please keep it ruling. I told you guys all this happened by the fifth inning. I told you there was no rules but drinking beer. I told you that they had already got to the point where they're just drinking uh, free beer, some straight from the tap from the uh, uh, from the truck. So how do you think that went? About as good as you could probably guess. Literally the entire field got covered with trash immediately after, to the point where the fucking PA people left. They're like, yeah, you're on your own. Go fucking uh, handle it. In this point, some of the chaos starts, but not all of it, to the point where they have to go into the ninth inning without bases because at this point, a mini fucking chaos uh, a riot erupts. People are on the field, bunch of streakers, blah, blah, blah. Someone steals bases. They literally go into the ninth inning without having any bases. Whatever. All right, cool. At one point, one Texas uh, Ranger outfielder said he had literally been hit by about 20 pounds of hot dogs. Where did he get the hot dogs? I don't know. Probably because no one's in the guy. The, the asylum's not being ran at this point. A lot of hot And dogs. by the time you get to fucking someone throwing jugs of wine at players, jugs of wine, jugs of wine. Where the fuck? Uh, <laughs> stop for a second. Jugs of wine? Like, uh, uh, you have to go scouring through a goddamn stadium to find jugs of wine. And these assholes had it. So by the time you get to fireworks, it doesn't even matter. So they're throwing jugs of wine at people. But believe it or not, things still aren't fucking going crazy. Things don't really hit off until the ninth inning. The ninth inning is where Cleveland actually, uh, which McCall somehow comes back from all this and ties the game. Once that happens, which McCall, it looked like, uh, oh, sorry. So now a streaker runs onto the field. Yes. When it's tied, another streaker goes right to the uh, Texas outfielder, tries to take his hat. Texas isn't playing it at this point. From their mm -hmm. angle, they think that the guy is going to now finally attack. Because, again, the entire stadium has already erupted into chaos. So why is this important? Why did I tell you all about Billy Martin? Because the first person on the dugout would bat in hand. Not to go stop a fight. No. <laughs> Billy Martin runs out of the dugout with a bat in hand, turns around to his guys and said, we're going to war, and runs full into the chaos. Bat in hand, swinging left and right. You're like, he's going for everyone. Whole field fucking, the whole team's doing the same thing. So you might made me wonder, all right, this is where Cleveland steps in, right? Because, like, there's this is their field. This is their fans, right? Yeah, they do step in. They get bats, too. Name running to fucking help the Rangers. Because at this point, it's literally the entire stadium of fans <laughs> against ball players, And his ball players just swinging bats left and right. The, the fans are throwing fucking fireworks at people. They're throwing cherry bombs at people. <laughs> He's out of control. Uh, SWAT team had to come in. The tear gas people to finally get out of control. And I'll leave you with this because this is why, goddamn it, America, you can be hated for so many things and you earn it. Goddamn, you do. But this is like, this is where it hits like the crescendo of American things. Throughout all of this, the organists never stop playing Take Me Out to the Ball Game. Oh, Yay. my God. That last note is beautiful. And Rashawn. I just need you to take a breath here. I can't. I can't. I, I, I have notes I jumped over. Like, I it just... It, no, it, because there's... One, one of my most favorite historical moments of this country, I can absolutely think of. There's, like, you could not create a better situation and environment to get to that decision. Oh. <laughs> and and here's my favorite little detail that you you probably did not necessarily realize, and that's totally fine, but... Of course, mm -hmm. you educated me on a wonderful event in American history, and I had that I had really kind of I'd heard about it obliquely, but I hadn't, you know, I hadn't really done the the rabbit hole dive that you did. 
And I knew that I knew that there were reasons why you can't get beer after the seventh anymore. Of course, I grew up in Boston in the eighties, so true. Shit, you thought true. it was us, but that that uh, time and that event is one day after I came into this world. <laughs> Holy shit! That's <laughs> one right. One day hey. after my birthday, my actual <laughs> fucking birthday. Holy shit! God damn, I love yeah. that. Right? When we talk about it, that, is just oh. you know. I mean, if I could not think of being born under a better sign, holy shit, I hope my daddy was sitting there watching that game and bouncing me in old Natick, Massachusetts, looking at the screen with all that fucking chaos happening. Oh, my God. Uh, I need everyone listening to understand. I did not plan that. I was not thinking of that. I was over here. Greg can back me up. I was over here thinking that it was his birthday. It was uh, upcoming on Saturday the 8th. Like, I, I, I understand. I did not plan that. Holy shit. I, <laughs> totally understand that, and it's just because my birthday happens to fall on Monday this year. So you know who wants to party? I mean, we can oh start the party on Monday, whatever. But I, God damn, absolutely, that is that's a thing of beauty right there. That's yeah. just. I mean, honestly, it is one of my favorite American historical moments. It could not be any more American. I I think that is. I think yeah. I would agree. All right. I I think as I, you know, I usually like to use the baseball metaphor stepping up to the plate. I don't know if I can compete. I think that might even be the end of the show. So thank you all for joining us now. All right. Yeah. Well, sorry for going long. And honestly, most oh, people think are. about disco night. And, oh, yeah. and to be fair, that was also the, pretty fucking the wild. Disco night, right. <laughs> disco <laughs> night was wild. And I, I did know about that. And it, uh, some shit got blown up. And yep, I, I do know that that happened. But yeah, it got blown that's up. pretty awesome. That's pretty bad, too, when your own when the when the home t- uh, town uh, fans are on the field and everybody's just like no fuck it we're we're you know we're we're going in with the opposing team because we do have more in common with this team than these fucking animals right now that's just insane. how that's gonna go insane we did this is insane where the river is on fire oh. <laughs> <laughs> also my cousins are from Cleveland so I'm gonna make sure to send them this episode so I think they'll 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 appreciate that. That piece, my uh, my older cousin lives in um, England. He's two years older than me, so he was he was bebopping around at that time. Well, that's oh, goddamn. Okay. Well, I don't even know. I'm gonna take my my best crack at this uh, because I really do love the subject. I do. I think it's 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 one that's that's near and dear to my heart. You know, um, absolutely. It, it, you know, it, just examples of what you're talking about. Uh, I, I have to go to a movie called Beautiful Girls now saying with me just for a sec, just as far as just explaining to any of our listeners who I hope are not from the good old US of A, when we're trying to explain the mindset of what we're raised in and what's going on. In the movie Beautiful Girls, um, uh, the Matt Dillon character is having an ongoing affair, I forget who the actress is, uh, with with another man's wife. Um, and uh, uh, Timothy Hutton and his friend, are, are with him and the the Matt Dillon character gets the shit kicked out of him by said husband and his friends right and <laughs> at one point they're driving now over to his house to get revenge it's him and Michael Rappaport uh yeah Matt Dillon is in the hospital I think and they're driving um and he has Mira Servino at home who uh, you know loves him but you know that's not good enough but whatever but they're driving and at one point Timothy Hutton turns to I forget who the actor is good actor uh, and says, you know, he was um, sleeping with his wife. And the guy just keeps driving and goes, so? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> like... <laughs> and if there's nothing else, like it, it, that's who we are. That's who we are as a people. Like there's this weird set of unwritten rules and sub rules and so be it. So yeah, that's it. We're going to, you know, and being a Boston guy, I understood this movie. Yeah, that's that's how it happens. We're going to, uh, you know, uh, I gotta, I gotta ask a favor. We're gonna go and hurt some people, and we can never talk about it again. And whose car are we taking? Right, that's the only <laughs> question that comes up. I understand it. These are, this is just how we roll. So, I hope for our non-American listeners that that kind of sums it up. Um, today I sent out a TikTok to you guys. By the way, wasn't even a TikTok guy until they said they were gonna ban it, and now I can't stop watching it because again. America. <laughs> I mean, you got to do that. I got to do that. Yes, the Chinese have my information. I get that. But that was going to happen anyway. They already had it. They already got it in massive information buys. That's just how these things go. So be it. Uh, and and they, they watched the TikTok today of a woman absolutely aghast that the entire world does not celebrate the 4th of July, particularly in London, 
Right? <laughs> <laughs> Which we had some great commentary. One from an English woman, one from a, a woman from Africa. I think it was from Niger, but don't don't quote me on that. But just trying to get like saying, wait, what? Um, and and yes, the the American woman was completely incredulous. Like, how do you not celebrate the Fourth of July? That is beautiful. It's like Christmas, no less. <laughs> and again, wait till everyone finds out about Juneteenth. Right, exactly. So, you know, that's just that's where we're coming from. That that is the background. So, I when I when thinking about this, I'm thinking about like at least the most American failure, like just the the most the way that America totally stuck their dick in the dirt, did a front flip, a back flip, and still came up with a big old smile on their face. Right, just you know, shooting off Roman candles in each hand. I have to take you to the drink of my youth. All right. Now it's not beer. Uh, Rashawn touched on beer. Very important in America. It, mm. Even so much, even so much to the point where you write and where you rightly pointed out that during prohibition, Anheuser-Busch actually sold blocks of, um, uh, 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 trying to think about it. It's a uh, malt to, uh, and they, they would sell the blocks of malt and they would actually say, whatever you do, don't put this in boiling water and then don't cool it down and throw in some hops and then throw in some yeast and let it ferment. Whatever you do, do yeah, not don't do, do that. this. <laughs> it, it literally was saying like, under no circumstances are you to do this. So thus home brewing was born. So a very important drink, but you know, for those of us who were, uh, uh, again, for our listeners in Europe, uh, for those of us under a certain age, usually they restrict some of our parents, some restricted our alcohol intake, <laughs> <laughs> but we subsisted on the all American drink of Coca-Cola right now. Yeah. Firstly, the drink that kept me chubby and uh, unattractive through all of my younger years. No, no doubt. Right. That was just, I didn't even think twice. I'd go to the, go to the kitchen. I'd open up a can of Coke you're right love that still still that time i still drink seltzer to this day i'm like a cigarette uh guy who quit cigarettes but like still chews on his pencil because i love that <laughs> sa- i fucking love the sound when you pull that tab and you hear that release uh, right it is just a, you know even pepsi once did a commercial based entirely around the sounds and the anticipation of drinking that particular drug now going back to the earliest days of coca-cola all right it's not a completely true tale. It wasn't made entirely. Its main ingredient was not cocaine. However, there were trace elements of cocaine because of the coca leaves. It's just just being clear, just being mm-hmm. truthful that it had sort of trace elements that would give you that little lift. Uh, and yeah, that was there. So right off the bat, we're talking America, right? <laughs> what do you do in the 19, what do you do in the late 1800s, early 1900s? Feed the kids cocaine in liquid form, even if it's just a little bit, but you know, yes, please. let's get them started. Let's get them started young. So, Opium oh, over the gums. Just a little bit, just a little bit of stimulant. What do you want? This is before. Yeah. Okay. There were finally, I think it was around 1910, 1920. There were some mm-hmm. health related questions and they decided to, you know, Knock that out. But fast forward all the way. Oh, and, you know, we can't also forget that Georgia at one point uh, for uh, outlawed you two drinking Coca-Cola. Just just a, just as a little side note, because they were a little worried about what it would do to gentlemen of your complexion. And it might make them too interested in women of a fairer complexion. Yeah, that <laughs> shit happened. Just talking to um, the people. Yeah, I'm gonna exactly. I'm gonna I'm gonna go rape some white women. That's it, man. I mean, that was that was what they're really worried about. Like have a coke. The, I'm a just to this day I don't drink Coca Cola because that's it that's, because all of a know. sudden I'm just filled with the savage need to in just the 1920s have at some white women in the 1920s. The it's just me hopped up on Coca Cola and jazz. That's it. That's it. Coca Cola and jazz <laughs> and, and jazz. Jazz. well have been have a Coke and a white girl. That might as well have been the slogan back then. So Georgia had to step in and, you know, Georgia itself. All right. Fast forward to this wonderful time called the 1980s, right? Coca-Cola is pretty much still the standard American drink. It has its competitors. It has Pepsi-Cola, which came along probably around the 1930s, I think, to challenge it. Uh, There's always Dr. Pepper or 
the real one, in my opinion, when you go down south, Mr. Pibb. That's that's the real shit. I, I don't know. You know, Mr. Pibb went to school and got his doctorate. Go ahead, Rashawn. Hold up. You're going to talk about 80s Coke uh, competitors and you ain't even going to bring up Tab? Uh, tab? Well, my father, my father loved Tab, but that wasn't the sweet stuff. Drink that, was, that wasn't the sweet stuff. That was the diet stuff. And Diet Coke was was introduced and in trying to compete. Fair enough. But that's a, that's a, yeah. that's a sub sub genre for another time. But we have Coke. Pretty much RC. Let's not forget those fucking heathens, right? RC. Oil Crown Cola. They were out there. They were doing their thing. Coke really ruled the market. So what did Coke decide? That, what does Coke decided it needed to do? Motherfucking Shasta. Okay, Coke, go ahead. Coke decided. Oh, we can't forget Fanta. Sorry, I gotta mention Fanta, the Nazi soda. Uh, motherfucking, <laughs> sh- motherfucking Shasta. Shasta. Fanta, Fanta, like, you know, because because Germany was being bombed and they had to make Coke for somebody. They had to make, uh, you know, uh, fake generation Coke. But no, Coke decides in its uh, infinite wisdom, in its Mm -hmm. 10 cent beer night mode, that we're going to stop making Coke taste like Coke, taste like Coca-Cola, and we are going to make it taste more like Pepsi-Cola. To this day... Still, no one quite understands this move. It is one of those things that is the subject quite literally of conspiracy theories, which I'll get to. But the fact of the matter is they went through all of the money that it took to get the old ones off the shelf. Well, let the old ones sell out, get the old ones off the shelves, print up new cans that said new formula. They brought in Max (laughs) motherfucking headroom, which... By the way, <laughs> another kind of cool subsect of American culture. Google it, kids. Max Edrum. It was even a show. <laughs> right? It was that it first was, yeah. idea of digital artwork, of digital, of digital coming to the fore and changing our entertainment taste, right? Everything goes on. And what does the American public do? Says, well, fuck this shit. <laughs> That's it. <entirely laughs> Right? We stormed the baseball field against the Coca-Cola company. This company, by the way, is so intrinsic and so well infused into the American culture. It has a line associated with it in one of my favorite films of all time, Dr. Strangelove, when no one other than Colonel Batguano says, you're not going to have to answer to me. You're going to have to answer to the Coca-Cola company when he shoots a Coke machine and gets the 10 cents he needs to try and stop World War III. All right. This company <laughs> was so iconic and so at the top of its game. And so, for whatever reason, just decided to throw that success away completely to the point where their president had to go on and make a commercial. There was no online back then, there was no internet, there was no. Twitter or X or dark, dark days, kids, Elon fuck up or whatever the fuck you want to call it. There were no, there were no billionaires killing themselves on the Titanic yet. None of that had happened. Okay. He had to go on television and film an ad basically saying we fucked up and we'll bring back the original formula and we're calling it Coca-Cola classic. They don't even call it that anymore. Um, But just to try and do it, this was such a wild decision based thing where sales plummeted and then sales rocketed so much so it gave rise to a conspiracy theory that they did all this on purpose which is also why i believe they did not do this on purpose (laughs) because again (laughs) there is nothing more american than shooting yourself in the dick and being like i meant to do that (laughs) welcome back coca-cola classic okay that is exactly how we roll here because it's like Fuck it. All right. Did I just blow a billion dollars on a company that had absolutely ruled the American market? Yes. Am I going to bring back the exact same thing I used to make before and call it something different? Absolutely. Why? America, capital M. <laughs> Do you understand? Merc. That is what we did. So, Rashan, I, I, I still bow down to the greatness of your story because 10 cent beer night, nothing's going to beat that. But this is yeah. just a little thing that goes in with that, I think, and just the ideas of, well, you know, how bad can we fuck up and still somehow kind of front roll out of that and end it with fireworks and a guitar solo? So I give you the story of when Coca-Cola changed its its formula. 
There you mm-hmm. go, gents. There you go, gents. America, fuck there yeah. There it is. Hell yeah. I mean, to Josh's point, pew, the pew, reason pew, why pew. we have Santa, the idea of Santa Claus, and frankly, the, the way we celebrate Christmas is all because of Coca-Cola. You betcha. They changed oh, it yeah. to the fat jolly man. He used to not necessarily be red and fat and jolly. That's all the Coca-Cola product. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, kids. We covered this in TSG. You go ahead and look at the library. We got you. We got yeah. you. We got you. We got you. We got you. Uh, all right. America, fuck yeah. All right, Gregory. Absolutely. Yes. What do you got for us here? What do you, how are you going to bring us out? Talk, I talk. don't know. I don't know how to follow up all of that fantastic Americana. I got to be honest. Like all of that was some great America, especially Coca Cola and what it means to the economy of Georgia, apparently. <laughs> but uh, it, it means a lot. They don't fuck around with it down there. Um. So when I think of America and, you know, trying to keep it light. You know, I don't want to be the dickhead to come in and just, you know, just skeet all my Bill Maher all over things. So I'm going to say, okay, what, 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 what's America really good at? Believing we're number one. And I think you guys touched on that. It's one of those things um, you can totally say that we're not number one, especially after we had a half black Hawaiian president. Um, You can definitely say we're not number one um, because of all the things that Jeff Daniels ran down in that monologue. And uh, I think it was Newsroom was that TV show. Um, But, um, yeah, we're usually not number one. It it depends on who's not calling us, who's calling us not number one. Like Donald Trump is allowed to say we're suck. Iran is say we suck. Iran is not allowed to say we suck. So it depends on who's agreeing with us at the time. Like, it really does. Um, and which brings me to uh, number two, prioritizing literally all of the wrong thing. It's like, we just do it. We just do it. Like, we're masters of it. Again, beer, baseball, Coca-Cola. Like, all of these things are massive priorities to, the, to uh, America and the American culture. Not, you know, education. <laughs> or the planet or anything <laughs> like that because fuck that noise which brings me the nerd which <laughs> brings me down to the next thing that we're just really really good at doubling down on terrible ideas <laughs> oh yeah because unlike these two pink okamis i understand that america is never wrong and if you think america is wrong then you're wrong And to support that means that and to believe that means that not only do you hate America, you hate freedom, which means you hate Earth. Like that is how deep we try to dig that shit. The universe. This is God's favorite planet, dude, and God's favorite country on God's favorite planet, motherfucker. Easily. Science. Easily. Easily. And, um, you know, like, honestly, uh, for for most of America, my, my next I was just going to talk about what are my favorite things about America. Strange, strange land of strange things that it is like pretending that there is a thing called America. I mean, first of all, a lot of people don't like that we call ourselves Americans. The country is called the United States. But what are we going to call ourselves? United Stadians? Like state? Like what the fuck? What would it be if it wasn't Americans? Like I I just think we just settled on Americans because the Uniters, you know, the right, the Users. Like I don't know what we would call ourselves if it wasn't that. So I'm not going to be too mad about that. But, you know, we just love to pretend things are American. It's like, no, everything that is European American or just, you know, post Native American domination is not American. It's usually just a bad impression of European mixed with everybody else, which is a beautiful thing. This is also my favorite thing about America. We get everybody here so everyone can tell everyone why their culture sucks and why your own culture is the best because we didn't want to travel to other countries to watch people do that shit so we invited them all here so they could just do it here um my next favorite thing about america is our general yes no culture we have this yes no i mean the, the truth is we just found a way to make money on the problem and trying to solve the problem simultaneously. So we have this yes, no relationship with so many things like guns, drugs, prostitution, immigrants, porn. Like you just have this feeling you would Slow say down, out, 
Yeah, you know, like you walk down the street and you ask people how they feel about it, but according to the internet, y'all love this shit. You want gay porn, you go to a red state, goddammit. Yeah. <laughs> That's where you get it. That's where you get the really, re the real, real good shit, if nothing else. You know, drugs, I mean the uh uh what, what are we calling it now the opium pit when it was just black people it was just like the scourge but now they're calling it the like opium you know, the, epidemic thank you thank you very much that the opium epidemic you know like we we love drugs <laughs> we fucking love drugs we let that shit bring our society to its knees and then we were like yo how do we get more of this What's it? What's it called? Head implosion. I'll take two of those. <laughs> That's my favorite drug right there. I love. I love me some head implosion. And uh, which which one's the one that makes your dick fall off? That make your dick fall off. I want that one. I want that drug that makes your dick fall off. And uh, you know, obviously, we infect the world with our popular culture. So I'm gonna sidestep a little bit and just talk about how amazing black people are. That's right, black people, because. If there's one thing I love is seeing everybody in the world try their hand at hip hop. And you know what? There's some mixed results. There's some mixed <laughs> results. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's definitely interesting. You know what I mean? Especially when you see them revving up to say the N word and you're kind of like, motherfucker, don't. <laughs> don't. Don't. Every time. Every fucking don't. time. Don't. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if it's an A or a hard R. Just don't do it. Yeah, just don't do it. Just don't do it. You know, so I mean, it's not you know baseball, jazz, basketball is an international sport now. I love that. I love that because it proved, if nothing else, bringing everybody here, being that melting pot of ideas, is actually benefiting the entire world. You know, like it is honestly going to be. I think the most important legacy of the United States. Serial killers, not so much, but let's be honest, you know, that's one of the things you think about. We have the best serial killers. There it is. And I want to make it a competition. You know, I'm not definitely not challenging anyone out there to be U the best serial killer, right? Yes, A. Yeah. Yes, A. Yeah, well, I'm not, but uh, we we just we just have that. We we've got that, and we're just gonna have to own it going forward. And honestly. A lot of people make fun of our celebrity culture. Um, some people make fun of our use of toilet paper, um, our rejection of the metric system. Yeah, met yeah, toilet paper. It's like a, some countries are like Americans are gross. Why are you walking around with stank ass? All right, <laughs> you're using wadded up pieces of paper. This is like look, because we're Americans. Like as I see my point I made earlier about doubling down on terrible ideas. That's what we're going to do. And the same thing goes for the metric system. It's absolutely what we're going to do. <laughs> the inconsistency <laughs> of our drinking age, like 21. Like this is the shit you can do when you're 18. It doesn't matter. You still have to wait until you're 21 uh, to start drinking. A lot of people say I'm not trying to you know pour booze down young people's throats but at the same time america's gonna do it for me like it's not like there's a guy right i mean there's no comp there's not a competition because i know who's going to win this race and um probably i don't think people appreciate that we do have a sense of humor about how fucked up we are not just the se segment we're doing but we we know we're a hot mess. We know we're loud. We know that we're destructive. We know that we could be doing things better. We ain't gonna. We ain't gonna. Nope. We're gonna do things the American way. And whatever the fuck that is, I don't know. Check the calendar. It changes a lot. <laughs> it changes a lot. Like whatever the hell it is at the moment absolutely changes a lot. But I, I mean, I will say this with what's happening right now, this is probably one of the most American moments we can have. Our judicial system passed one hell of a stress test under our uh, former president. And I will say that we absolutely it one hell of a stress test, one, one hell of a stress test. Woo. And um, the protests that are happening, I mean, I 100 percent that these wonderful kids are on the right side of history. And, uh, you know, to the Democrats who are against them, I'm like, dude. You're on the left and you're against an anti-war movement. Just think about that for a second. 
Look at yourself. Look at yourself. All right. Just think about it for a second. And look at yourself. Look at yourself. All right. <laughs> I mean, with the exception, of course, of Bernie. Fucking Bernie. That dude's just trying to be on the right side of history all the time. (laughs) Fucking Bernie, man. Uh, But we do. We do. Not just here, but, you know, any other time we absolutely laugh at how absurd the American experiment is. Well, I I got to you. You made me think about going all the way back to our love letter to Generation X. Check it Mm -hmm. out in that catalog there. The movie Clerks. Uh, which I always have thought also encapsulates a lot of the ideas that we're talking about today in, in the form of an independent film. Uh, Mm. and yeah, it's really, you know, when Randall is telling Dante, he's got to go to this funeral and Mm -hmm. Dante sensibly looks at him and says, but you hate people. And (laughs) Randall without missing a beat says, but I love gatherings. Isn't it ironic (laughs) that (laughs) that's America right there, people. That's America. I hate my fucking fellow citizens, but I got to be at this event. That's just how it's going to be. It's an event. I have to go. I got to go. It's Coachella. You went with a movie from the early 90s and I'm about to go with a movie from the late 80s. There you go. It's um. Speaking of clerks, uh, I think an underappreciated moment is when Randall finally is done with Dante's shade. It's like, you didn't have to fucking come here today. Like, I, that is one of my favorite moments of the whole yeah. thing, which also has a lot to do with what we're talking about. Like, we have choices. Yeah. And then, mm-hmm. to Greg's point, we'll make them and then literally bitch and moan about them the entire way through. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, also honestly, fact, some forget American history real fast. Fun fact: What Greg just talked about is exactly how and why we pay for electricity the way we do, and why we don't have abundant sorts of electricity like Mister Tesla tries to set us up with. Yep. Now well, there you go. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, I cool. will say that you brought up Clerks, and yeah, America cinematically is somewhere between Clerks and Scarface. You That's just, yeah, just, That's you just so have to find. You yeah. just have to find it. Yeah. The movie I was gonna, I'm gonna say, it starts with an S. All right. Well, go for go for it, Rashawn, and then I'll I'll put in my last movie reference for you. No, go for it. I'll put it in my. Little, oh, I, I was saying, yeah, yeah. I think Clerks, Scarface, and with just a little pinch, a dash of Anchorman thrown in there because of <laughs> you know, the two yes. lines when when he absolutely, especially if you want to sum up, in my opinion where america is today people are always like what the fuck is wrong with america what's happening i'm like no 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 no. watch the one scene in anchorman when he's looking out over the vista and he says the city of san diego which means of course a whale's vagina and she just, <laughs> looks at him and says i think it means saint diego and he just says, oh agree to disagree right which is if there's not a fucking moment that sums up where we are in america right now and honestly, I this is why we're all had friends. That conversation a this, thousand times. I'm like, no, this is why we're all friends. Uh, we share brain waves, weirdly enough, because that's not the movie I was thinking of for a number of reasons. But I, I, I agree with you. However, I think there's another scene that is also quintessential American um, in what we're in the light of what we're talking about, and also reflects Greg's uh, uh, reflections. And it's the scene in the boardroom where uh the boss is talking ron's not paying attention and he's like ron are you uh listening and ron's like no and he's like well it's about you okay like that, that, <laughs> that is also very american that is a very american scene if you walk away with anything although there's so many american scenes because oh, that whole God. tenor of the movie is based off of everything we're talking about right. now we'll just fuck up through success like I, absolutely just- Oh, yeah. Success into failure and then back into success. Success. Why? Because we're determining the whole thing, right? I am. That's why it's called this decision. <laughs> it's why it's called fucking up, Rashawn. Uh, yes. yes, that's yeah. it. The Peter Principle in front. And Greg nailed it. We'll we'll tell you where the field goal post is, and then we'll like, hey, like you believe that? No, we fucking yeah. moved as soon as we yeah, needed. Moved that shit a while ago. <laughs> Same time. I think you, I think it gets closer, gets further apart, yeah. gets Holy back, nerds, it's fun, whatever. You need, we we know. hate everything that we spend all of our money on. A hundred percent. We do. do. We hate again. everything. All right. Well, that we spend all of our money on and all of our time on. Hey, and speaking of spending money, uh, you there is a link to the merch in the bio, so make sure to stop on by, and you can hate our shirts. That's okay. Greg works hard on them. 
Greg, uh, Greg puts, helps put the merch in the store. So Buy 10 of them, burn them all. We don't care. That's it. Exactly. <laughs> burn them all. Call us Shoot all. Shoot at them. them. Pinko <laughs> liberal commie bastards. Stop Sweet. using toilet paper. Use our shirt. <laughs> That's it, man. <laughs> That's it. But as a matter of fact, put that shit up on Instagram, on TikTok. I want to start a TikTok movement of burning the steam gentleman shirts. I'm, I'm fucking down for it. Anti-American. Yeah. All yeah. right. God damn, love that little romp. That 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 one. As soon as you said it, Rashad, I'm like, oh, I'm so down. I'm so here for this. I don't even know what he's talking about, but I'm just gonna bluster my way through it. So fuck it, we're on to it. All right. Uh, oh, well, vacation. With that, let's do that. Uh, <laughs> let's do our best. Uh, let's do it. Let's do the recap. Let's do, or look forward to the weekend. Uh, Gregory. You know, we got the Celtics starting up next week in the finals. What are you going to do to uh, to get ready for that? Um, I, We're checking out the dates. You know what I mean? We're going to see um, because we had an idea to kind of uh, make a thing out of it because it's okay. been a while. So, so I'm going to make sure we check out some of the big outdoor Boston venues because it's going into June. Yes. So it means like, yeah, we can definitely be out for this playoff. So this playoffs, we're going to be out among the Celtics faithful. All right. Fantastic. So, okay. Looking forward. Kendrick to- said it's a must. We are outside. Hey, mm-hmm. I can, uh, you know, I want to hoist a, uh, you know, looking forward. I'm, I'm cheering for another banner, even though, you know, my Bruins are, my Bruins are out. So we're back to the other garden team with without a doubt and yes I, mean, I fully admit i'm jumping on that bandwagon that's how this shit happens in boston please, that's please, please do yeah that's, please that's do. boston that's america it's particularly boston i can't yeah, lie totally <laughs> well, totally throwing tea into the harbor fuck yeah let's do it fuck yeah we're going we man bridge said we don't have to actually be taxed no, yeah, we're just gonna do it anyway fuck it fuck you king yeah. fuck you king george he shouldn't right. even buy it up <laughs> do you, bring, you bring the indian costumes Hell, you hell you yeah. were supposed to bring the Indian hell costume. Yeah, scalp fresh and everything. <laughs> Hells yeah. Gonna have get my drunk. slave do it. Gonna get drunk. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, going Too there. Soon. All right, Rashawn. What are you uh what are you doing this weekend aside from starting a revolution? Revolution will not be televised. Yeah, I would have to like being around people for that to happen. Uh like <laughs> normal weekends. I'm gonna do my best to survive to Friday and Saturday and then get hammered, like front row Leonard Skinner and hammered. Another Will <laughs> uh Farrell movie shout out. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna leave everyone with this awesome topic that I, I hope people continue to explore and look into because our history is rich. Um, as Greg pointed out, uh our experiment in this country is um an experiment we are literally 53 plus country many countries put together yes i said 53 you yep. do the math but you need to understand our actual history to understand mm-hmm. why it's more than 50 yep. that being said all this there's so many different ways to talk about this situation or encapsulize it but i'm gonna leave it with one of my favorite moments and one of my favorite movies that's also a very american situation and most people when they watch outside of america like why the fuck do you people like this and frankly most people not born or around the 80s don't really but anyway i'm gonna leave you with a quintessential pivotal scene in a absolutely tour de force movie say anything my man Sitting at the gas and sip, talking to his buddies, upset because he just got dumped by uh, Diane Court. Mm. And his buddies are giving him biblical knowledge of how to handle the situation. Um, and at that point, John Cusack's uh, character looks at his buddies and said, hey, uh, if you guys know so much about women, why are you all sitting here at gas and sip at like 10 o'clock at night with zero women around you? To which... One of his friends looks at him without missing a fucking beat, and this could not be any more American. It encapsulates everything we talked about. He looks right at the, uh, my man, and he says, it's a choice. I'm choosing it. <laughs> choice, I'm man. choosing to be here. <laughs> Which, again, if, if you want another part that's so American, it's also uh, uh, in, uh, that point is accentuated by a 12-year-old who's hanging out with these uh, drinking teenagers, and his response, and this is how the whole thing ends, and I'll end it with you guys, bitches, man. That's it. And thus, the modern incel movement was born. America, baby. Uh, America, fuck it's yeah. It's a choice. Yeah. It's a choice. It's and it is a choice. All right, I'm going to go try and uh, 
I got to go try and improve my son's uh, soccer record one more time. We're, we're, we're three, one, and one right now. Uh, or no, sorry, one, three, and one. Excuse me. Uh, well, so that's a good season. <laughs> I was like, I, I was pushing that. No, Christ. no, no, no. Way more in the loss columns. But hey, what can you do? All right, we're doing it. And they are playing well. They actually are passing to each other and playing like a team. So I'm actually pretty damn proud of these kids. I'm not going to lie. Even if they are all the bad news bears, without a doubt. Love them. Uh, so yeah, going to do that. And uh, going to get ready to take that plunge and get official old uh, on monday so yeah i might be uh i might be calling out for free bird myself by saturday evening <laughs> see mm-hmm. take this liver out for one more old spin and see what she can do <laughs> hoorah hoorah find a beer truck buddy that's it. Uh-huh. that's it john give me a give me a, a glass of john daniels Ain't <laughs> <done>. as well <laughs> as i do all right, so uh, please Let's join see. us on all the socials. Rate, review, come back, listen to us again. Uh, we're kind of we're getting our groove. We're hanging in there. We're doing our best, and we still want to bring you the best of social commentary and pop culture. Which, goddamn, this issue absolutely did it today. I think so. All right, you can't see me. Our time is now. It is Josh the Birdman saying, "Keep your heat up and keep your head of steam on." <laughs>